Good morning, good morning, good morning. There we go. I think it's working on YouTube. All right. I think we're up. Waiting for Twitch. I know I'm up on Mixer. Let's see. Get this set up before we get started today. All right, we got two people on Facebook. What's going on? We got a person on Mixer. Hello. And we're good on Twitch. What's up, Ben? See, you're here already. Thank you, Ben. All right. Moving my screens, make sure I can see everything. Sweet. Okay, um, wait a couple minutes before we get started. Make sure everyone is uh, is up on here. Um, today we'll be doing some ink drawings. So I'm gonna get my tools set while we wait for people to jump on. Hello, Ben. How are you doing? How's it going? All right, get my pens. Got some more people on Facebook. What's going on? If this is your first stream with Creative Ads today, Glad to have you here. My name is Garrett Augustine, I'm the art director. I'll be doing some ink drawings today. Just home chilling, yeah. I hear that, Ben, just home chilling. <clears throat> All right. All right, we got quite a few people on Facebook. Good morning, Facebook. Just getting my tools set while we wait for people to jump on. Um, let's get started. I think I've got, I've got at least one person on every, uh, every platform. All right. Um, we're doing some ink drawings today. Like I said, if this is your first stream, my name is Garrett Leo. I'm the art director for Creative Ets. Um, we've been streaming some content the past couple weeks, um, just to get some, some classes and demos out to people that are home during this social distancing time. Um, today I'll be doing some ink drawings, so I'll be working on some portraits because this is my personal art practice. So I already have two sketched out portraits here. It's kind of hard to see them, but um, I'll be inking those and then I'll draw some more. So before we start anything, let me just go over. Ben says he needs to paint more. Ben, you need to paint more. And we got a hello from Chicago. Hello. Um, let's go over the tools for what we'll be using today. Um, like I said, these will be ink inked drawings, uh, but I am going to start with these non-photo blue pencils. Um, the reason that I would start with these pencils is because uh, when you draw with them, right, you see that blue drawing. After I ink it and I scan it with a scanner into my computer, the blue, uh, this specific non-photo blue pencil won't pop up when you scan it. So these are really good tools to have if you're gonna be doing a lot of comics or digital art, you wanna take your art and edit it digitally, um, especially if it's an ink drawing. So I use these for um, when I'm drawing my comic pages and when I'm drawing my, my work that I'm gonna take digitally. Okay, so these are non-photo blue. These are super, super cheap. Um, they're about like a dollar, two dollars, um, and you can get them at like a Blick, uh, an, an art store. Okay, so I have my non-photo blue pencils. I will be using my really fancy ink brush pen. This is a super great investment if you're gonna be doing a lot of inking, especially if you're going to be doing, um, like if you wanna have a lot of brush work, this is super nice. It's got this little ink cartridge in the end. You can see I'm almost out, and I might be able to replace that after we work today. Ooh, now auto hosting me, what's up? What's going on, Porsche? So I've got my ink brush pen, 
Um, I might kick it a little old school today. I've got some India ink. This is just the Blick brand. And I have some uh, cool pens like this, right? So this would be a dip and then drop. I might do that. And then I have my Micron pens. So I have all different sizes of Micron pens. If you wanted to get these, this is also a really good investment if you're gonna be doing any ink drawings because, um, oops, pardon the noise, you can get a set of like 10 of these of different weights for your, your line thickness. And then it also gives you a graphic, right? That's just a really thick, it's like a marker tip. And then it gives you a brush. So this and this, these are the same things. This is just a little bit fancier and you can recharge it and refill it so you never have to get rid of the pen. You just have to get the ink packs. Um, but they do similarly the same thing. Um, so this, <clears throat> you can get a pack of these for about like 10 bucks, 15 bucks if it's on sale um, at a Blick or any local art store. These are a really good investment. Again, they last a really long time and <clears throat> the ink that you use in here is an archival ink, which means it won't like deteriorate. It'll keep its, its strength. So just tools to, to keep keep in mind. Um, I will be using some scraps of my Bristol paper. Um, let's see, do I have that just to show you? I've been talking a lot about Bristol paper. Again, not a, not a sponsor by Strathmore, but um, Bristol pad paper, it's a it's like a thick cardstock paper. <clears throat> so it can hold a lot of a lot of material. So whether that be ink or water, I've actually watercolor painted on them. Um, and they came, they came out all right. Um, but this is what I use for ink drawings. The Bristol Strathmore brand is my personal preference. Um, you don't have to use that. There's other types of inking papers and marker papers, but that's this is the brand I like. It's a little bit thicker. It's got some tooth to it, right? It's not super smooth. Actually, one side smooth, one side has a little tooth. And as you can see on the edge, I just kind of tore it, right? Like I said, this was some scrap paper that I had inked. Um, I'm going to use these drawings for a um, online almost portfolio of work <clears throat> that I've been I've been working on for a while and have been posting towards. If any of you are on Instagram, I'll post it in the in the comments. Um, you can see I am um, drawing a bunch of like figures and making a club for them, right? So they're all a collection of figures. It's called Simon's Club. Um, I might be able, if people have questions about it, I could talk about it as I draw, but um, if you find the Instagram, right, it's not on Facebook, not anything, just Instagram, you can see I've already posted a couple of like the finished drawings, um, really grotesque like figures, um, a lot of details in suits, right? There's a, this is an, it's a new body of work that I'm working on. Um, so if you wanna see some finished versions of these that have already been scanned, edited digitally, and are now living online in the interwebs, um, Check that out, Simon's Club. All right, um, so let's get started. I think I'll ink one just to start with because this is a an inking ink drawing part one. Um, I I made it to part one because I'm gonna do this a couple days this week. Um, just because um, I really like it. This is my preferred medium right now. Now that I'm stuck at home and I um, don't have a kiln, so if I keep making stuff in clay, I'll just have a bunch of dusty clay pieces around. But this, at least, I can finish up and work on um, as we go. So I'll work on, I'll work on this guy. Now I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna try to get the the lights to focus on it. So give me a second. I might have to move these because it's brightening out my paper. Um, if anyone's watching and have watched other ones, has anyone made any art recently? There we go. You can see it. What art has people been, have people been making? So again, just a couple tricks. I'm gonna just draw and kind of talk through what choices I do as I do things. Um, but a good note to have is if you want something to look farther away, <clears throat> if you're working with ink, you wanna have those thinner lines. And then if something is closer, have them be thicker lines. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the graphic, right? That's the marker tip, just because I'm gonna outline the hair to start. An important thing with this is um, take your time. You don't want to mess it up or have to change your drawing because you uh, 
messed up a little bit. Um, I will say, if you do make a mistake, um, not the end of the world, because I'm gonna move my, my mic, make sure you can hear me. Um, there's this other tool, and I forgot to mention this, Presto Fine Tip. It's basically wide out, but it's like a tip pen. There you go, you can see it. So you squeeze it and then you can cover things up. So again, if you wanna have these be um, finished drawings on their own, where can you see that, there you go. Finished drawings on their own, and you don't wanna scan them and you don't wanna edit them, you want the drawing to be the thing, try your best not to not to mess up your inking. But if you are gonna scan them, again, you can use this white out presto tool. So if I made a mistake, I could white out over it and then draw back on top of it, let it dry, and then draw back on top of it, and then you won't see that when you scan it in. All right? Got a comment, made some salt dough eyeballs for my indoor planters. Right on. Karen Lynn made some salt dough eyeballs. If you take pictures of those um, as you're working or um, the finished product, we'd love to see them. So you can add them on our Facebook or social or Facebook or Instagram pages. Just tag us in it, Creative Ets, because we love to see it and we'll, we'll highlight it in our stories. Um, so that'd be super cool to see. And other people could see it too. Maybe they'll make some. Awesome Ketchup said... Was it they were inspired to start drawing again, did a few oil pastels. Right on. Again, <clears throat> we haven't even done oil pastels yet. Good for you for uh, finding that material and just going for it. Um, Richard. Take some pictures of those, Richard. Document them. Richard be the most prolific artist I know and then doesn't document any of his work. How about that? you see that? Yeah, you can. Okay, cool. So now when I drew this, um, I didn't add a lot of details, right? I'm probably going to add a little stubble, um, add some more wrinkles in his face. But uh, right now I'm just doing the, the basic details. And again, that's with the graphic pen because the graphic pen is just like a nice solid black line. Um, I'll go in with a thinner line in a moment. But I'm just going to get this, this drawn up. Now, something to note, because um, I was curious about it when I started. This stuff dries pretty fast, right? That's already dry. Um, so it's not like a Crayola marker set, right, when you're drawing and then you're smearing it on your hand. This is pretty good about drying fast. Um, but again, if you smear it right off the bat as you're working, then you're gonna have that stuck there unless you use the white out. So just, you know, take your time. Be strategic with how you draw and what you draw first. Um, like I'm drawing from top to bottom so I can let my arm, my hand slide down because I keep my hand on the table just for it so it's sturdier. Um, so draw left to right. If you're a righty, draw left to right and then top down. Um, if you're a lefty, it's top down but then right to left. That made sense. I'm not a lefty. My dad's a lefty. I'm sorry. Um, now I don't really know. I'm drawing this completely off the page. <clears throat> I might crop it, right? So cropping means you're selecting a certain area. Um, if you look at those drawings on my on my one my, I just stuttered that sentence out. My Simon's Club Instagram. You can kind of see I've cropped them in different ways. Um, like the pivot stream, um, we've been doing these past couple weeks. So if you want to check out the previous streams we've done, we've had a lot of good art demos and music demos with some visiting artists and then people from our, our crew. Check that out at creativets.org slash live. Um, but I've been doing, again, using this Bristol paper. I did some watercolor. You can actually see them. Um, I did some drawings. I did some tea and ink paper, tea and uh, coffee and paper. And I did, uh, oh, I just took the tape off. And I did a watercolor painting. So if, if you're looking for stuff to do by yourself or you're looking to do stuff with, sorry about my squeaky chair, to do stuff with um, your kids. We've done a couple lessons. I've done a couple walkthroughs with some projects. So check those out.
And this is just some of the scrap paper from those projects where I messed stuff up or restarted. Pinstripe suit. I don't know. And if you're watching, um, if you have any suggestions on what to add to these drawings or what colors to use, I'm all ears. Maybe I'll have them in white suits. Maybe I'll have them in black suits. I don't know. If you have a preference for the character, drop a message. We're streaming on YouTube and Mixer and um, Facebook and Twitch. So wherever you're at, you post a comment, I can see it. So if you have a suggestion, let me know. All right, so there's my general suit outline form. I'm gonna work on the tie next. Or maybe I'll do the face. No, I'll do the tie next. The face is my favorite part. I'll save that. He's got one of those old school long uh, collars. For his suit. And something I'm doing every once in a while is I'm changing how much pressure I'm applying, right? So <clears throat> you might not be able to see it, but right there on the suit, I kind of flicked the pen so that I can have some points on that little wrinkle. Again, that's just because I'm using the one pen for now. I am going to switch it up um, and use some different ones. All right, face. Switch my pen because I don't want my face super thick, right? I drew these. Usually when I draw, I do the whole page. So it'll be a nine by 12 drawing this big. Again, this is scrap paper. So I did them a little smaller. So maybe I could use this, the graphic one for the whole face, but not for these small ones because otherwise it won't look, um, it won't have any depth, right? So depth is if you can look into a picture, if it looks 3D, um, I'm going to change it. So I'm going to use, I'm going to go down half in size. Mm, I don't like that one. And I've just got a little post-it note here. I just test out my, my line weight before I use it. That pen's drop. Can't be using that. All right, I'm gonna go down pretty small to a micron three size, right? And I'm just gonna go in, I'm gonna start in the middle of the face and work out. I always do that for my for my sculptures and I'm gonna do that for my, my drawings as well. And if you're just joining us, um, I saw a bunch of people just jumped on on Facebook. My name's Garrett Leo, I'm the art director for Creative Ets. This is one of the many um, online streams we've been doing for art demos and music demos. Um, today we're doing some ink drawing. So I'm just working on a, a portrait that I had sketched the other day. I already drew it out. And now I'm adding my, my ink. And for the eyebrows, I always start by going up in the middle and then I kind of curve them out so they kind of bend over, All right? And I'll show you the one eye that I did, All right? It's a different line weight, makes it look farther away. There you go. Oh, that just reminded me, um, if anyone is on Instagram. I am doing a print giveaway this week um, for one of the prints I made with our Creative Ed's team. And my prints all the way back there. I'll grab, let me go grab it so I can talk about that real quick.
All right, I'm back. How many how many people did I lose because I walked away? I lost one person on Facebook. Wow, I see how this couldn't wait. Um, I'm doing a print giveaway. These, uh, I think it's, let me measure before I say it. These 17 by, 11 by 17 prints. I did this, uh, I made this design with our Creative Ets team. It was a, a nice collaborative conversation that we had. Um, so I designed this 11 by 17 print of all these toy soldiers equipped with non-traditional weaponry. Um, I'm doing a giveaway this week. So if you go on, if you have an Instagram, whether you have one or not, you should make an Instagram so that you can follow us at uh, Creative Ets and then follow my art as well. Um, giving that away, go on my page and I'll type that in down here. So if you want to look it up, So there's my Instagram where the giveaway is going. So this is from my private collection of art. Giving away three of them, um, hand signed. They're the first edition print, so this is the first batch that we made. Um, they're from the first ones we sent out. Um, you have to, let me pull up the rules. And uh, here we are, here we go. So go on my, my Instagram, um, find my most recent post. It's a picture, it looks like this. Boom the print. You have to follow my account and Creative Ets. You have to like my post, because I post it. And you have to tag a friend in the comments. Every additional person you tag is an extra entry to win. And if you share the post to your page, like you repost it, or you share it to your story, that's another additional entry to win. So you could have, you know, 20 entries to win these prints um, if you tag a bunch of friends in it. And if those friends follow and tag, they can be entered to win. So again, go to my Instagram, manglazedblack. That's in the comments. Look for a post that looks like this, right? Shows the three, and then you can see some detailed shots of those figurines. Um, like that post, follow myself, follow Creative Ets. You can find the Creative Ets Instagram in, that, in those comments in the write-up. And then tag one of your friends, whoever you follow, or just tag a random person that you think would, would maybe like this. Um, tag them in my, the comments of my post. And then if you want extra slots to win, you really like the print, you're like, you know what, I want like 30 entries in this raffle. Um, repost it to your story or your page. And then again, the more people you tag in the comments, the more people you get. So again, that's something that I'm doing for, for my personal self, my personal studio. Um, I've got some extra prints, so I'm giving them away. Um, and I, I wrote a little bit on there, but you know, now more than ever, we need to, you know, spread the awareness of mental health and look out for each other. So the piece was made with the intent to talk about mental health, right? Talk about the, the 20 um, veteran and active duty member suicides a day, right? That's what the piece is about. So you can have that conversation. You can start talking about it um, in your home. Um, and then, you know, just spread awareness of, of the work that we do at Creative Ets and, you um, programs like these that we're running you know we want to send them out there we want to have people know that they have resources they have options so if you're interested in the print as an art collector or just as a supporter for creative ets or my own practice go on instagram find the post comment a friend like the post what was the other thing follow my account in creative ets and then once you follow myself and creative ets then you'll know uh all the stuff that's going on. So if you're from Chicago, we have a lot going on in Chicago all the time because that's where our art programs are primarily based. If you're from Dallas, we've got some art programs running up there. You know, once the world goes back to normal, we're going to start those programs right back up. Um, or if you're from, from Nashville, you know, find out what cool music's going on with creative events. Boom, working on the working on the other eye now. Ooh! Just got some stickers. They didn't pop up though. They didn't pop up, but I see them. Mr. Two and Awesome Ketchup, thanks for the stickers. I don't know why they didn't send up. Biker chick sparks. Maybe they popped up for you, but not for me.
There's his other eye. Ketchup's notification showed up, but not mine. I don't know. I don't know, Mister Two One Two One Four. Is that Kyle? I'm sorry. I don't know why it did that. It didn't pop up on mine at all. So I'm just watching the the chat here. Ooh, right on, Big Mike's there. What's going on, Big Mike? I saw your. Uh, I watched your other demo. Thanks for the. You said looking good. Love the lines in depth. Yeah, take another look. It's getting there, right? Right now, I did the the basic outlines, and I'm going in the face with some more details. Um, shout out to Big Mike stream he's doing tomorrow. Let me check the time. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. Um, 10 a.m. Big Mike will be on working on some shoes, painting some shoes. So if you have any shoes laying around at home, some old shoes, or you got some new ones you want to deck out with some fancy stuff, uh, check that out. Uh, if you have an Instagram, again, check out Big Mike's Instagram. That's six one. It's six one zero. Big Mike, right? Let me check. Yeah, six one zero. Big Mike, check out his cool work. Um, he'll be on tomorrow, and then you can find a a cool picture of him that was taken by Jason Myers on our on the Creative Ed's Instagram. Um, if you want. You'll find him. So yeah, if you're if you're just kind of hanging around like a lot of people are right now with the social distancing, Big Mike said correct. 10 a.m. tomorrow, he'll be painting some shoes. Um, if you want to find out what other streams are going on, I like to talk about them a lot. Um, but if you want to see how they're kind of laid out, go to creativets.org slash live. Right? Creativets.org is our website, so you can find all information from... Um, all the things we do and who we are and what we're about, but if you're specifically looking for the the streaming content, creativets.org slash live, you can see our past streams, right? You can watch all the videos we've streamed and catch up, um, or you could look at what's coming up. Awesome Ketchup sent another sticker. It's still not popping up for me, but I see it. There's the link in the comments. I'm going to copy that and resend it. There's the link, goes to everyone, check that out. Sean says it's Jackson's 11th birthday today. He's watching and drawing too. Well, happy birthday. What's going on? We'd love to see what you're drawing today. Maybe I'll draw a birthday cake. 11th birthday, wow, double digits. Well, we're glad that he's working on smart today. That's awesome. Boom. Now I'm gonna add some like really tiny lines. Let's see if I have a small pen. Yeah, so now I've got a Micron 005, super, super small. And I'm gonna go in and add, now I'm gonna add some extra wrinkles in the forehead, right? So the initial lines are all about getting where you want things to go. And then now I'm gonna go in and add the really, really detailed lines. That's like your texture. What? We got some happy birthdays. I'm not gonna sing happy birthday because it's just me. And that's the worst part about singing happy birthday when you hear yourself. Um, Karen Lynn says happy birthday. Mr. 21214 says happy birthday. You need some birthday wishes, Jackson. Now, something that I do on my drawings is I like to add these like textured dots. Let's see if you can see them. On the ears, you can't see them, they're that small. Well, I put like little tiny dots so it's like almost like skin texture. Um, just in a couple areas. So you can almost see like the pores from, from the, the face. Switching it up, going back to a graphic pen because I want to add some. Some lines there. Again, switching to graphic, I want to add 
some jowl lines. Now I'm going to add some texture to the lips, just some lines. Right, he's coming together. So you can see there's a lot of different areas of, of line weight. And again, when I say line weight, it's just the thickness of the line. So closer in the eyes, there's a lot of little tiny details, right? And then further out you come, um, you see some thicker ones. And that just helps add some dimension and depth. Now I'm gonna add a couple lines on the top, just a couple, super small, to suggest he's got some, some textured lips. Right, outline the lips a little bit, see the difference in his skin tones. All right, I'm gonna do the hair. Hair is one of my favorite things to do. Um, I will be using my um, brush pen because I'll be able to get it to look like it's a little shiny, slicked back. And I'll show you how to do that. So first I'm going to go on the edge, I'm going to do this little portion right here, and I'm going to make those little tiny wisps, right? The middle part, I'm going to do that on the edges, and the reason I do that is because that'll be where you can see the hair texture, and then in the middle, I'll leave it white so it looks like highlights, and I'll show you what that looks like in one sec, I'm doing it right now. And again, this pen is awesome because you have super control over it. You can really make sure you're making the lines where you want to make them. Right, so now if we look at it, it almost looks like shiny slicked hair. Right, it'll look better once I add all of it. Once I add all of it, it kind of makes a little bit more sense. So I'm really relying on that fine tip from the pen or from the brush. And they're not super even, right? They're kind of varied, right? But you can kind of see that hair texture coming along. Now again, you can get super detailed and come in with one of these um, super small micron pens, or you can use your quill tip, because these are really nice fine points. Um, and like make the, every strand of hair, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna kind of suggest that he's got some slicked black hair. Right. And again, how you do that is, You just make these suggested lines. Now for this area, I want it to look like he's got some big curls. So I have some areas going up higher, some lower, so you can kind of see like these big swoops of hair. Again, just watch your finger, make sure you're not uh, smearing your ink. And I find it that you make better if better uh, texture for hair if you just kind of go. Right, if you take your time and you overthink the hair texture, it doesn't, um, doesn't come out right, in my opinion. Or at least with how I draw. I, I, I do better if I just kind of 
start adding the, the hair texture. Now I'll show you the hair. Let it focus. Is it gonna focus? Focus. Boom, and we got some hair. Now I went in there and added some little specks of lines for the hair, but that's pretty good. I like that. Awesome Kesher sent me a hype burger. Thanks for the hype burger. Didn't pop up, but I see it. I don't know why. What we'll to fix that? Um now I'm just going in and adding some more, more details where I think that it needs it. All right, black suit. Awesome ketchup sent me another sticker. What? Got some sparks. Um, if you're just joining us, my name is Garrett Leo. Doing um, some ink drawings today. Here's my one uh, portrait of a person. If you want to see some finished versions. Check it out on my, my Instagram at manglazedblack, or you can check out just these at Simon's Club, S-Y-M-O-N-S-C-L-U-B, Simon's Club. Um, do I want these to have black suits? I kind of like the white suit with the black tie. I think that's what I've been doing. I'm going to check it, what I had been doing with the other ones. Um... Yeah, they're all white suits and black ties. Maybe I'll keep that tradition up. Or maybe I won't. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to add some texture in here for sure to start. And by texture, I'm just going in and adding some little marks to suggest that it's made out of a fabric. Right? It's not just this amorphous thing attached to my character. Um, I'll do the black tie. Gonna use my ink brush again. Now here is something that I will say. If you have any wrinkles or lines on like in an area you're gonna make black, you have to give it a little highlight. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So you, I had shown previously some just like textured line that I added at the time. And now I just kind of outlined it right there. You can see that I outlined that those lines that I did. That's so that they don't disappear, right? You still wanna be able to see them. And now when I color in the next part of the tie, I'm not going to color the whole thing. I'm just going to color the middle part like that, the middle part of the tie, because I don't want to lose the different parts of my tie, but it's all one color. It's all black, but I need to see the highlights and the shadows. So now I'm working like a negative drawing, right? I'm choosing what areas I'm not going to color in so that um, you st I don't lose any of my details. And again, here's this big textured line right there. I'm just going to color next to it, I'm not going to actually touch it. Depending on how big of a highlight you want, you just choose how close you want your black ink from the uh, colored area to be. How close are you going to draw it? So again, thinking about line weight, if it's a thicker line, it's farther away. Or no, if it's a thicker line, it's closer. And if it's a thinner line, it's farther away. Just got myself mixed up. Um, I'm just coloring in that spot. Now, if you wanted, I'm using this um, brush pen set, but you can use like any regular brush with some India ink. Um, my India ink is right here. I have this little jar of it. So I could just dip it in and brush. This has way more control with how much ink you let out and how much 
uh, drippage you have, you have none when you use this pen, this little brush pen. But if you were to use like a regular brush and you were dipping in the ink and bringing it over, you have a likelihood of dripping some ink on your paper. And that is not fun. I did that a lot. All right, so there's my guy. My guy. Um, face is almost done. Hair is done. The tie. Um, now I'm going to go in. I'm going to go in with a really thin micron and add like the top collar of the shirt, right? Because I don't want it looking flat. Just like that, just those little lines to suggest there's a top of the collar. Um, maybe I'll add some little side lines curving. So when you're drawing, you want to kind of, when you're shaping something, you want to have your lines go to the shape of the form, right? So this collar has a curve to it. So I put in some lines to make it look like it's curved, right? Um, I said I was going to add some like uh, stubble to his face. So I'm going to do some stippling. That's when you just poke it with a pen. I'm not going to use my smallest one. I'll go maybe to a three. Yeah, that looks good. Um, I just tested it on my little scrap post-it pad. Now I'm going to go in here and add some... So maybe five o'clock shadow. And you know, you don't have to. I could leave him baby faced if I wanted the character to be baby faced, but I wanted a lot of these characters that I draw. Um, the initial ones that I did have a lot of lines and details and they look like raisins. They look like they're very pruney people. Um, these guys, I want to be a little bit more clean cut, right? In their looks. Um, not as grotesque or ugly, but I still want them to be a little rough, a little rough around the edges. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding some, you know, maybe he hasn't shaved in a, in a day. It's been a rough day. So I'm just adding those dots. And something, you know, just visually, I think it adds a lot to the, the character, right? Even just as a drawing, you know, now he's got a little bit more going on in the face. It's very subtle, right? But that's the, the beauty of, you know, these ink pens and, and techniques is that you can add a whole lot of details. So as you're looking at a piece, you know, from far away, you're like, you see the silhouette, you see those thick, bold lines from the graphic pen. And then when you get up close, you can see that there's a lot more going on in the face. Now, if I wanted areas to look darker, um, the method that I'm using is called stippling. That's when you're just like poking the paper with your pen. Um, if I wanted to add some value, there we go. Now you can see it. Some value to the face. Um, I could try shading. My drawings are pretty flat. Right, they're three dimensional in the, in the line work. And they, I don't actually shade them, um, but if I wanted to add some areas where it's like really, um, like there's some shadows in there, um, you just group up more more dots. So I'll do that here. I'll just show you. Okay, so what I'm talking about is you see that right there. More grouped up dots make for a darker area because they're more together. And then as, they, as they're separate, they're just lighter. So if I wanted to shade with this, I could group up some dots in the face. Not going to though. Not going to. Um, do I want the suit black? Or do I want it white? Anyone have any suggestions? White or black suit? I'll just add some texture to it. And I'll just make it look. Um, make it look like it's got texture. So I'm just gonna do like a, a little cross hatch um, to suggest there's some fabric. Now cross hatch, I'll draw it real big. Uh, I'll do it here. 
and is another way of shading, but I'm going to use it for text or crosshatch. Just means you have lines going one way, and you have them going another way. That's crosshatching. Um, you could, you know, you group up more lines. See how that it got darker? Now it's you're seeing it from a distance from my camera, so it actually works better. So, a couple lines lighter, and then the more darker. So I'm going to add some crosshatching, just in some random areas to suggest that he's got. You know, maybe a fancy suit on. And I think I'm just going to do it to the suit part, not the, like, lapel collar area. That'll stay smooth. Maybe that's, like, a, a shiny material. And then the suit is, like, a rougher material. And again, when you're adding your lines... You want them to follow the shape of your form. So if I have a curved shoulder area, my lines need to curve if I'm adding texture to it. I'm just adding some areas of texture. Just to suggest that his suit is made out of a different material. I could go, again, it's it's all about how detailed you want to go. I could go through the whole thing and add this texture to the whole suit. Um, maybe I will. Let's see what that looks like. Let's experiment. I'm gonna try what happens if this if it's not all together, right? I don't want a solid stitch. I want it to look like his suit is a little ratty, a little thrown together. So I'm doing my cross hatching lines down, lines across. And then I'm going making like some X's or crossing my T's. Yeah, I like that a lot better than just the, the little areas. And again, cross hatching you can use to shade or as I'm doing it right now, I'm adding some texture to my suit. Right? Yeah. Now he looks like he has a little textured suit on. Again, I'm leaving this part of the suit white, so it looks like a different material. Maybe it's a little shinier. And then the suit itself has some texture. So I'm going to keep doing that to the other side now. But again, be aware of the forms that you're trying to draw if you want this to look 3d and what i mean by that is if you're going over an area that's like bumped out your lines have to curve right so that it shows that shape and i'm doing it a little separated i haven't really made a like textured this much like this. So this is a bit of an experiment for me, but I'm I'm really liking it. If you see if you've looked at the other um, drawings I've done, um, they're all wearing white suits. I've just added some 
some textures. So maybe I'll keep that up um, in my drawings. For these, anyway, these like um, suited figures. No, maybe I'll just keep leaving the suits white and just adding all a various of variations of textures. I've got a big open spot here, so I'm gonna make some bigger lines. Now I'm crossing it. Right. So you can see he's getting like some suit. Now again, from a distance, now his suit looks a little colored. Right, it's almost got like a gray tint to it. And I just did this subconsciously, but um, my lines on the arms are a little closer together so that um, it looks a little darker. Right, so there's some shadows in the crease of his arm. And then areas where it's open, they're not so close together. my inked person number one boom so again I've got um, this area of the suit I'm leaving white because I want it to look kind of shiny right it looks different from this texture so it kind of stands out I think this the the shirt needs something needs going with the shirt think do I want pinstripes pinstripes are always fun maybe I'll do like a couple wiggly shirt patterns. Yeah, that looks good. I'll add some little lines. Again, just experimenting with texture. Uh, that's a word that I've kind of mentioned in almost all of the streams. It's one of the important vocab words with art and just knowing how things feel or look how they might feel thanks for this for the stars the sparks right all right i think this guy's done um about the halfway point of the stuff i'm doing i'm going to work on another one in a second but just want to shout out if you just joined i'm seeing our our viewers are kind of popping up popping down moving around um doing a giveaway this week um, so if you're interested in one of these creative Ed's prints um, I decided to do a giveaway because I have a couple left in my personal collection um, these are the first edition prints that we did with um, that we released through creative Ed's. Um, this is a design that we kind of worked together as a team to come up with the concept of it and then I kind of drew it all out so I actually hand drew the same technique I'm doing with this I hand drew every single one of these figurines. Now we scaled them down. The, ori the original drawings are about this big, um, like nine by 12 paper again. And then I added all those textures in there, all those details. Um, and then we put it together in this giant print. Um, now more than ever, and I've posted this in, the, in my Instagram post, it's important that we're looking out for the mental health of others and for the overall health of others. So. I'm hoping to, to give away three of these prints. I'm going to give away three of these prints to kind of spread the awareness of mental health and um, um, just awareness of veterans and supporting veterans. Um, so I'm doing that on my Instagram. If you want, if you're interested in this print and you'd like to enter to win, I'm going to comment the Instagram again. It's in the comments, man glazed black. Go there, and there's a couple rules to enter. I'm gonna pull up my phone so I can show you the page. Um, so this is the this is the post you're looking for. It's hard to see, but it's a post of three prints. Um, 
to enter, you have to like the post. You have to follow my page and the Creative Ed's page. And then you have to, um, oh, that's it. That's the only things you have to do. So to, to qualify to, for, the, for the entry, for the giveaway, you have to follow my account, have to follow Creative Ed's, and you have to like the post and tag one of your friends in the comments. So it could be a friend that might be interested in the post, then they'd have to recomment to enter. Um, or it could be just a random page that you think might be interested in seeing this, this giveaway. Um, so if you do those three things, you can earn extra entries to win by if you repost this, this, this post to your story or your page. If you repost it, that's an extra entry. And however many people you comment, that's an extra entry to win. So if you comment and you tag 20 people in and you've done all the other, the other requirements, then you have 20 entries to win. Right, um, it's gonna be running all week. So Friday, I'll announce the winner, who's gonna get the three prints, and then I'll I'll DM you on Instagram. Again, this is an Instagram exclusive giveaway. If you're on Facebook, if you're on Twitch, if you're on Mixer, go check it out. Make an Instagram if you're interested in this, and then go on there and do those things. So again, tag a friend in the comments, follow myself and Creativets, and like the posts. And then if you want extra win, extra ways to win, um, tag more people or share it to your story. And then I'll send this out to you. And I'm going to sign it, autograph it on the back. So it'll be a, a signed artist print. This is a risograph print, if anyone's familiar with that process. Um, it's like machine screen printing. I'll see if I can get some details on there. Yeah, so there's some little, like, um, nice little detail. It's on a museum quality paper. Um, it's got some little specks on it. It's one of my favorite papers. I actually print um, a couple of my other prints um, on this paper that I really like. So again, shout out to this print giveaway. If you're interested, go check that out. Man Glazed Black. Um, follow Creative Ets, Follow me. Like the post. Tag a friend. And share it. Like I said, if you share that to your story or your page or even if you just send it to a bunch of people and then they start commenting on there, the, the reason I did it was I'm just, you know, trying to get us all connected, get um, some people on Creative Ets that follow me, some people on Creative Ets, um, on my page that follow them, just to kind of get us all in one group so we can keep sharing the, uh, the resources. Um, again, just raise awareness for, for mental health and the stuff we do at Creative Ets. Um, our mission is to empower veterans um, to heal through arts and music. So what a better way than to give away a, an artist print for this week. So if you're interested, check that out. I'm working on my second drawing now. Boom. Again, I'm just going to do go with the, uh, the graphic pen to start. Get the initial initial outline done. And if you're interested in seeing, like I said, um, or if you just joined in and you didn't hear me talk about this at, at the start, these ink drawings, I initially sketched with a blue pencil. It's a non-photo blue pencil. It's very specific. You can get that at an art store. Um, so when I scan these images, because these are going to be digital artworks, when I scan them, um, the blue pencil won't get picked up. So I don't have to worry about erasing it. Um, I have a couple of my drawings like this available in like a physical print form. You can find that on my... Instagram page, Maglice Black as well. Um, if you're uh, interested in seeing how these look when they're done, like when they're scanned, they're edited, they look like the final version, you can go to Simon's Club, S-Y-M-O-N-S -S Club. Um, that's another Instagram that I, I just started for this series of work of just like figure drawings. Um, my personal practice is kind of all over the place I do all that I can because I, I just like exploring new materials and mediums. Um, I'm a ceramicist, so I do ceramic sculpture. If you saw the um, the first couple streams that I did, it was a ceramic sculpture. I did a little bust. So that's what I really, really like to do, but I am getting more into drawing as I, as I, as I get older. Um, 
just because it's more it's readily accessible right it's clay i gotta take all this stuff out i gotta make a mess i gotta fire it i gotta glaze it drawing i can draw it scan it edit it and then it's a finished piece of art and i feel really satisfied with my my progress in the day so um if you're interested in checking this out please do i'm going back in this drawing real quick because i forgot i didn't add like the inside of the ear so i needed to add some dark areas so the ear has an inside part. Um, if you were here for, I forgot which demo it was, but I talked about, oh, I think it might've been the, the, um, this clay sculpture one. I talked about like hiding things in your art, um, like little things that you know as an artist are there. So when I do drawings or even sculptures, I'll put G's in the ear. So I'll draw like the letter G, maybe you can see it there. So I just kind of do the shape of a G and then squiggle it around so it looks like a, an ear inside. So I usually do that in the ear or the hair, just like a little G because that's my, my first name, Garrett. So again, think about um, where you want thicker lines versus thinner lines. Thicker lines are closer, thinner lines are farther away. And the great thing with the tool I'm using, this graphic pen, depending on how hard you press it, you can get a, a nice variation of line. So just pick and choose where you want things. I wanted this guy to have some scars. So now he's got some scars. All right, work on the tie now. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, I most likely have. Um, this ink is an archival ink, so it won't like deteriorate over time, so it's really high quality. Um, this is a Micron pen set. I got it for, I think like 10, $15, and you can get 10 pens in it. Um, highly recommend. It's a really nice pen set. You get all, bunch of types of uh, varying line weight. So I'm using the graphic right now. That's like the largest one. And I'm doing that just to get the general uh, outline of things done. And just an interesting uh, thing I want to note, I talk a lot about, you know, if you want to learn how to draw better, just keep drawing, keep practicing. Um, I got really good at drawing suits and things. I took a class at uh, the School of the Art Institute. Um, it was a comic class. And my comic that I wanted to work on involved um, a lot of suits, a lot of men in suits. Um, but I went to the Hill Washington Library, and they have an awesome resource. You can look at old newspapers, right? They've catalog like cataloged all of them, and you can see them. Like you can look up the film, the film of like the scanned newspapers from like 1900s and up in Chicago, and like other newspapers that have done the same thing. So I actually looked up old advertisements for suits in like the 30s, 20s, 50s, 60s, and like was able to see how suits have changed over time. I was also able to tell um, or see how like advertisements for suits change, which was just also equally interesting for myself. Um, but so as I draw suits, sometimes they're inspired by that little bit of research that I did um, to see how suits, you know, kind of look. 
Um, when I did these drawings, I was looking at some reference photos for the faces, but then the suits I did from my own brain. Again, I just added a couple, I'll let it refocus. I added a couple lines around the suit just to add a little, little texture. I might try doing a pinstripe suit for this one. Um, just like very thin lines, nothing crazy. Um, I think that might look really good. So we'll see. Switching pen thicknesses um, to, I'll go to the three again. It's hard to see it, but that little tiny black dot is the, the tip. And I'm gonna work on the eyes. And again, you could do the same thing with um, how hard you press is how thick the line is going to be. in the eyes. I always make my eyes solid black, just a aesthetic preference, um, but I leave a little white circle highlight at the top that you kind of know he has eyes. I'll, I'll draw the other eyebrow before I show you. Give him some pretty hairy eyebrows. I'm gonna switch to a different thickness. Um, go to a five if I have one. I'll go to an eight. Add a little stippling. I target the ears, the nose. Again, that's just like some pores that you can see. And some, some wrinkles in there, right? Just outline them slowly. Um, I'll go ahead and add the mouth down because I've got a thinner pen. And my lip texture, a little bit on the top, more prominent on the bottom.
I like that. You see all the, just mess around with the line variation. I'm gonna add some uh, lines to the chin. See, now I'm kind of resorting back to how I like the detail. I add a lot of lines, a lot of texture to the face. And for this guy, um, more sporadic, lined out dots, because I don't want him to have a lot of details on the face. Or like, um, not details, but I don't want him to have such a thick uh, five o'clock shadow. I want to suggest that he has some, some facial hair, or had, and he recently shaved it. Right. It's a little bit more spread out than compared to the other guy. Right, boom. All right. So now I'll go in, um, I'm gonna do the same thing for the hair. Get my brush pen. Take your time with the brush pen. And don't think about it too much, All right? Be very precise with your marks but don't think too much about where they're going. It's hair, it kind of goes all over the place. The one thing you need to be mindful of is like the direction of the hair. Um, so if you're making a bunch of lines going straight, they're just straight lines, they're not curving, you're not suggesting that the hair is moving around the head. So try to add some some curves in there. Again, curving with the, what's already there? He's got a little messed up hair on the right. Now on the top, is he going straight across? I'll show you what I do. So I didn't do the wisps. Um, like this guy's hair was going straight back, so I still did the, the lines on the top and the bottom to suggest that there's like so it's going straight back. But for this one, since it's going across, I actually drew out those waves, right? And again, I could go in there and get really detailed with a fine pen. I'm not going to. I like the, the hair being a little bit more blocky, of just like black, white, solid contrast. Um, if you're just joining in, my name's Garrett. I'm doing some, some ink drawing. Just want to give a little shout out to what else is going on um, this week. Um, Big Mike's doing a shoe art, uh, painting on shoes tomorrow at 10. We'll be doing some intro to songwriting um, tomorrow at 1 o'clock. I think today is, I'm the only thing going on today, so I'm glad you're all here. Um, make sure you share this video with people so people know what's going on. Um, in about like 10 minutes, I'll do some more announcements with just like other things we got going on. Um, working on the suit now. I'm gonna try to figure out, sorry about my squeaky desk chair. Getting my camera up here so you can kind of see not upside down. Cause it's, you know, you're watching it upside down. Does that bother people? I think it might bother me. What, does it bother you that it's upside down? Um, black tie, standard for um, Simon's Club members. And again, I drew some lines here. So instead of covering over them with the black, I'm gonna draw right next to them and basically draw negatively. 
right? So I'm leaving that white space and coloring it all around with black. And I do that so I can keep those texture details, right? I'm just changing them from black lines to white lines. And I'll show you how that looks in a second. So I had black lines on the tie, now I've got white lines, and I just drew right next to the line, and then I didn't uh, color it. Okay, now I'll work on this down here. Now this pen that I'm using, this brush pen tip, eventually it'll start like drying out because I'm using it a lot to cover in these really thick areas of black. So I might have to uh, stop using it and grab my other one. I've got two of them. So I started working on it, and I'm going to work on the inside of the tie. This brush is again really nice because it has um, such a fine point. You can get in small areas with it. So I reversed that line by making it white. Awesome Ketchup sent me another biker chick. 10,000 sparks. Thank you. So I've got my, my tie black, face is pretty good. I think I'm gonna go back in the face a little bit with some more, um, with my 005 pen. That's my tiniest micron pen I have. And I'm just gonna add some more uh, lines for like wrinkles. And I'm doing that just because I felt like there just wasn't enough in there. Now, me personally, like I said, I uh, my drawings, if you've looked at the Simons Club drawings or on my Instagram, they have a lot of a lot of lines. Like I go a little nuts. So like there's like no blank space. It's all full of details. Um, I think that's really satisfying drawing like that. Um, other people might think differently. So. You know, it's whatever you like. But, uh, yeah, I don't like very clean, smooth faces. I like them, like, really rough and gross. That kind of goes with why, like, I sculpt the way I sculpt. Um, they're very complimentary. Mm, I'll add some more lines around the mouth. And something that I do is like I draw those big lines for wrinkles or scars and then I just re-outline them or draw really thin lines next to them. Now he's got like a tiger stripe on his cheek but I kind of like that. Interesting.
Right? All right. So he's... I think the face is done. I think. A little bit. The, and that's the... You know... For me... Because this pen gets so small... It's hard to know when to stop. Because, you know, you can just keep going in and add more details. Right? I like that. That looks good. Um... Gonna work on the suit. Again, I'm gonna do these like curved. Curved and like straight lines on the edge of this collar. To suggest that it was rounded. Right there on the collar, just like those little, those little details. Um, and then for the suit, I think I'm gonna do a pinstripe. So not a lot of pinstripes. Um, very sporadic, but I'm going to do that. Now again, I'm not going to do straight lines. That's what, um, I know I did it when I first started drawing is, you know, you want to just do straight lines because it's a pinstripe, but you want it to kind of curve with the shape of the form. Now this is a pretty big dude, right? So I, they're going to round out a little bit. <clears throat> Let's see. Now this time, unlike the other suit, it's gonna be one solid line the whole time. Now the arm is going the other direction, so the pinstripes are going to shift. A little bit. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Alright. So now he's got this... Uh, Pinstripe suit. Again, I'm gonna leave the lapel um, pretty straightforward white. Um, I am gonna add a little line along the edge just to kind of replicate that uh, pinstripe pattern going all the way down. And I mentioned this when I started, but if I wanted this to be the artwork, right, maybe I wouldn't use a blue non-photo pen because I'd want it to erase, I'd want it to be away. Um, but this I'm gonna scan and then edit digitally. And what I mean edit digitally, I'm basically gonna make, I'm gonna up the contrast. Uh, maybe I could do a demo on that. I don't know if I could figure out how to display my screen, but you take the image and you, add, you increase all the whites, increase all the blacks, and then it kind of gets rid of all your little smudges, all the blue goes away, and then you ha are left with this very black and white drawing. Um, yeah, that looks that looks pretty good. I like that. Looking at it, it's always good to look at it from like a distance too. But here are two um, our two figures for the day. I think they look pretty cool. Again, this guy is pretty straight on portrait. That kind of matches the tone of my other ones, like as far as orientation. This guy's a bit at an angle, so I can crop it, right? And just like cut this part off straight across. Not with scissors, but when I scan it and edit it. Um, but I'll most likely be posting these in the next couple days as I finish, the, uh, finish them up digitally. So if you're interested in um, seeing the finished versions, I'm going to post, again, the, uh, the Instagram where I have all the other drawings. Um, Simon's Club, that's like my collection of um, portraiture drawings now. Um, so if you're interested in that, check that out. Um, have a couple, we've got more people on here. Do a shout out to the giveaway again today and all week. If you're interested in acquiring one of these um, first edition Creative Ed's prints designed by myself and the Creative Ed's team. Um, I'll be hand signing them all 
and shipping out three of them to winners in my Instagram giveaway. Um, so if you want to acquire the, the B print, go on my Instagram, find this post, right, with the, the three, um, three prints. Go to that Instagram, Man Glaze Black, that's where I'm running off, that's my personal artist page. Um, you have to like the post, follow myself, follow Creative Ets, and then tag a friend in the comments. Um, if you do those three things, you're entered to win. If you wanna get some extra slots to win, the more people you tag, the, that's more entries into the, into the raffle. So if you add, if you tag 20 people and you've done the other two steps, you'll have 20 entries to, to win. So that's your name pops up 20 times. If you want another way, you can also um, repost that in your story or on your page, the actual um, print image. I um, mean, I have some close-ups of all the figurines that are on the print, so you can see that. Um, so if you're interested, go on my Instagram. It's gonna be running all week, so you have all week to do it. Um, but I will be announcing three winners on Friday, three different winners on Friday, and I'll be shipping out some prints to you all. Um, they're 11 by 17, printed on a museum quality paper, so it's not just your standard paper. It's got a nice little texture to it, nice little tooth. Um, it's not super floppy. It's almost like a posterish board, but like I said, it's a nice print paper. It's a risograph print, which is pretty much like an automated like robot screen printing. Interesting process, but um, yeah, super cool print. I'm signing them, sending them out. So if you're interested in that, check me out on, uh, on the gram. You can also find it on the Creative Ed's page. If you already follow Creative Ed's, they reposted my post, so you can go on there, click it, and go to my page. But the, the contest to enter only works if you're commenting on my page, because it's from my personal artist collection. I'm doing the raffle, I'm doing it all. Um, so yeah, I think, I think these are done for today. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna go in real quick on this first one again with the, the super, super small pen, add some extra lines where I think they're needed, see if I look at a drawing long enough, I find more places to add lines, so again if you're looking at the Simons Club Instagram, that's where I keep all my portrait drawings now, um, there's a there's a lot of lines in those those initial drawings. I really like it. It's fun to do. Um, but I, I know I could keep I could keep drawing on these faces until they're full lines, and I'd be like, all right, sweet, they're done. Um, So I'm gonna I'm gonna make myself stop in a second because I do want some breathing room in the in the works. But you know I really I'm just kind of fascinated with like wrinkly faces. They look cool. Hmm. Is the suit done? I think it is. I'm gonna refer to my other drawings. Kind of see what I've done in the past. Yeah, I just added like random little marks. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna grab my one pen. And just add a couple marks in there to suggest there's <laughs> some texture. That's good enough. I'm gonna make a crisp line on the edge of my 
collar. I'm going to add that to my other one because I did not do that. Again, just details. The amount of details you want to add is completely up to you. Um, I like adding quite a bit. And I'm even going to go in, now that I'm looking at it, on my pinstripes, just add a little tiny uh, hatching to it, a little stitching to make it look like maybe the suit is made out of strips of fabric. Varying the amount that I'm adding. Right? Just those little details add a lot. Boom. I think they're done now. So, drawing number one. Nice little textured suit. Drawing number two. Nice little pinstripe suit like that. And just a quick refresher on the tools that I used today. Um, I primarily used my ink brush pen for the hair. Um, my graphic pen. And this is my Micron for like the general outline and then I went in with um, pretty much all of the sizes that I had of microns, different line weights. And again, I do that because if I want things to look closer um, or like bigger details, um, they I use a thicker line. And then if I want something to look farther away or really small details, I use a thinner pen. Um, I did not use my old school drawing technique today. Um, I really like drawing with these. Um, just like freehand drawing. Maybe I'll do that um, on Wednesday. I think, let me just double check that. Um, yeah, on Wednesday I'll be doing ink drawings part two. So I'll be working on some more portraits. Uh, maybe I'll just kind of freehand draw something with the quill pen. Um, but this, not so much for these drawings because I really want these to be really clean, but this would be nice to just kind of play around with. Um, yeah, I'm gonna add couple little details to the neck I didn't add anything and like that's the thing is you do, you don't really notice areas that are missing details until you scan them because the blues there but like I didn't add any I added all these textures to the face and then none to the neck same thing with this one this guy has nothing on his neck so I'm gonna add that real quick before I'm done for the day um, if you're interested in seeing any specific um, mediums that we could show off, please drop us a message on Instagram or Facebook or through our website because, you know, we're making up uh, demos and lessons based on the artists we can get involved and things that we do in our normal programs. But if, you, if you're watching and have been watching and you're like, you know what, I really want to see this, um, drop us a message so we know what uh, what you're interested in. Too. Interested in. Um, so yeah, so I just real quick added some lines to the neck. Just some little ones to suggest like there's some wrinkles there. I don't need those super detailed because I went so detailed in the face. Right, I really want the focal point to be that face. All right, um, that is it for today for ink drawing numero uno. Um, did two drawings, flip them around, of two figures. Again, I'm using a Bristol paper. This is just kind of scrap paper that I've kind of done some stuff, I ripped it up into fours, so I have enough to do another four, um, which just, this is just scrap paper, like I said. And I've got pads and pads of paper over there, I'll do some bigger ones. Um, but so quick, quick highlights before I sign off today. Print giveaway on my Instagram, go find it. If you are interested in one of those prints, I'm sending them out to you for free. It's a giveaway, I want you to have some art from Creative Vets, um, from me, um, to kind of talk about mental health, you know, like I said. Now more than ever, it's really important that we're looking out for each other health-wise, both mentally, physically, while we're all kind of stuck at home. Um, as far as schedule for the week, if you want to see our updated schedule or if you're interested in watching any past streams, um, go to creativets.org slash live. Um, there you can find our schedule of upcoming streams as well as past streams. This week we have quite a few things going on. We've got some, in, I'll be doing some intro to comics, be doing some more ink drawing. Um, we have a wheel throwing demo, songwriting, and we have a ukulele demo, and we have got some shoe painting art. Um, 
going on this week. So if you're interested in any of that, check it out at creativeets.org slash live. I'm going to type that in the comments right here so that if you're watching now, you can just click it and go. creativeets.org slash live. Check that out. Um, kind of plan out your week. But if you want anything specific covered um, as we're streaming, we're going to keep doing this till things go back to normal. You know, and we're going to continue to do it after because we really like being able to, to reach everyone really fast. Um, drop us a message. If you know any artists that might be interested in streaming with us, um, that maybe do something interesting that would be cool to have us do something with them, send them to us, refer them so we can, we can talk to them. All right. Um, thanks for hanging out with me in the studio today while I worked on my ink drawings. Um, to see a finished version of these, I'm probably going to scan these and work on them, you know, over the course of the, the week. Um, so follow Simon's Club if you want to see the, the finished edited version because that's where these are going to go. All right. Um, be safe, everyone. Thanks for, for tuning in today.